Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Technology has made our lives a lot more easier and in today's session I will be showing you how you can use technology to further simplify your day-to-day -day tasks. So let us begin by briefly describing what the assembly is. The assembly is basically a smart lab based in N5 since December 2014 and over the course of over six years we have successfully delivered about 250 free workshops. Now these workshops are categorized into three main categories, code, hack, and data science. Now the workshops uh, that are related to coding, software projects, APIs, games, etc. fall under the code category. Workshops like today's that focus on hardware, IoT, etc. come under the category of hack. Lastly, all AI and machine learning workshops come under the category of data science. Now our target audience is students, professionals and entrepreneurs. But anyone who is interested in our workshop is more than welcome to join us. You can know more about us at our forum which is members.theassembly.ae. Don't forget to connect with us on our social media handles. Connect to us on Facebook and YouTube at The Assembly and connect to us on Twitter and Instagram by using our handles which is at MakeSmartThings. So what is Google Assistant? I'm sure most of you might know this but Google Assistant is a virtual personal assistant developed by Google and announced at its developer conference in May 2016. Now Google Assistant is, a upgrade, is an upgrade of the Google Now and it can engage in two-way conversations uh, like normal human beings do. So how does Google Assistant work? So usually people interact with Google Assistant through natural voice but keyboard inputs are also accepted. It works similarly to Google Now which was the predecessor. It also uses the previous input to provide better answer in future. To use or activate Google Assistant you can use the hot words OK Google, Hey Google or you can long press your home button on Android phone or for Google Home users you can just say OK Google and in iPhone you can download the Allo app and you can use Google Assistant in your phone. So what are the requirements for this? So for today's workshop our requirements will be very simple. We will require a Raspberry Pi with a Raspbian or Noobs operating system and of course you will need an SD card and two extra things that we require today are the microphone and the speakers. Now note these microphone and speaker must be USBs because, uh, because of the way the Raspberry Pi is built it has only one analog output so you need to have USB microphone and USB speakers because these are the only ones that are going to work. So let us begin. Let us make our own home Google Home like device. All right. So before we get started with setting up the Google Assistant code on our Raspberry Pi itself, we must first register and set up the project on Google Actions console. So let's go ahead and go to console.actions.google.com and once you log in with your account you'll see this kind of a page right here and click on new project so that we can create a new project and you can name it anything you want so I'll just name it Pi Assistant and then I'll click create project and now we want to look for something called device registration so right here at the bottom you see are you looking for device registration click here so we'll just go ahead and click here and this might take some a, a few seconds to load up but once it is done we'll register our device okay so we're almost there so we'll go ahead and click on register model now these two names don't really matter you can give them any name so the product name I'll just name it Raspberry Pi and the company or the manufacturer name I'll just name it the assembly you can name it whatever you want but make sure for the device type you select speaker and the model ID 
is something that you might want to copy and keep it somewhere safe because when we type in the code in our raspberry pi we will require this model id so make sure that you copy this code and keep it somewhere safe and handy with you and then click on register model now this will give you the credentials for your model so you might want to copy this or download these credentials and keep them with you so just download these credentials and keep them somewhere safe so that uh, once we require it you will have it easily accessible so just click next and we don't need any of the trades so we can either save trades or skip whatever you want so in case if you have forgotten to download or have misplaced the credentials file you can download it again from here so now what we want to do is we want to enable the google assistant api to work with our raspberry pi so for that we'll go on to this url which is console.developers.google.com forward slash apis over here we'll be able to find all kinds of apis that we can use with uh, different products or devices so right now we'll click on enable apis and services and we'll search for google assistant google assistant api and we want to enable this api for our raspberry pi so we'll click on that and one thing that you want to make sure is this so right over here this shows us our, the name of our project that we are currently working on so you want to make sure that you have a project selected over here and if in case you have multiple projects you may want to make sure that the current or the correct project is selected so in my case it's correct so because if you don't have it you will have the apis enabled for some other project and this will lead to problems later on when you try to debug what the problem is so just make sure this and enable the google assistant api for this project okay, so now that it is we can see that it is it has been enabled so we'll go on to credentials and we'll click on configure consent screen now here you want to uh, make sure that you choose external you don't want to limit the people using from your app so you will just click on external so that you can use it with a google your any user can use it with a google account and then we'll click on create so now you need to make sure you need to choose your email so make sure that your email that you use is the correct one and the one this is the email that you will be using on your raspberry pi as well so make sure that this email is correct and then click on save so the last thing that we need to do is we need to go to our accounts uh, settings so we can go to manage your google account from here and we want to make sure that our web activity and those other things are switched on so once there when you are there at the activity controls you want to make sure that web and app activity is switched on as well as include voice and audio recordings is turned on and even location history is turned on and you and that's it so just make sure that these things are all of these are turned on so now we are done with this part of setting up the google project project on our google console applications or our google so now we can go ahead to our raspberry pi and type in the code there okay so now that we have an account on the google actions console we must configure the audio for it so for that i have connected usb uh, microphone and has usb speakers as well to my raspberry pi so make sure you do that step but in my case my usb speaker uh, microphone already has an input jack for uh, audio cable so basically it's a two in one it's both a speaker and a microphone at the same time so just go ahead and plug in yours whatever you have so but make sure that as long as they are usb the usb they have usb cables they are fine 
So um, now the Google Assistant SDK that we will be using have some strict requirements for it to work correctly. So to get started uh, with st setting up the audio on the Raspberry Pi, we must first obtain the card and the device number for our microphone and the speakers. So let's go ahead and do that. So type in a record space the minus L. So it gives us a list of uh, it says card 2 codec USB audio codec. So this means that um, my USB device or the mic that I'm mic and speaker that I'm using is in card 2 and it is labeled as device 0. So you want to re remember these device numbers and the card numbers so because we will be using them later. So just keep them in mind or write them somewhere if you have several others. So now to locate your speaker we will be this is to locate your the above command was to locate your microphone. So to locate your speakers you can have a command which says a play space minus L. So now this will give you a list of bunch of devices. So note that the Raspberry Pi's uh, 3.5 mm jack is typically labeled as analog or in our case it's BCM2835. So that is the analog and so which the HDMI will have this HDMI but the other one will be the headphone. So just make sure whatever device that you have. So in my case my audio as well is connected to car 2 and device 0. So just make sure that these numbers, the one for the speaker and the mic, you get them down correctly, both the device number and the card number. So this is all that is required from this step. So now that we have grabbed our device and card numbers uh, for both the microphone and the audio output, we need to create a file named dot a sound rc in the pi home directory. Now I have already created that, but I'll just type in the code. I'll say nano space forward slash home slash pi slash dot a sound rc now when you hit enter on this command it will open up nano editor for you and you'll have some all pre-existing text if you have some pre-existing text in that file just go ahead and remove all that and replace that all that text with this code over here now you can find this code in the description below as well so you can just copy it from there and paste it now however one thing to note is that uh, you'll need to replace these this bracket which says card number and the bracket which says device number so you'll need to replace the entire bracket with just your device number so let's say in my case if it was zero i would have said or uh, maybe somewhere here if if my card number was two so i would have two comma zero so you get the point so it's something like that so it is to oh, have my num lock on okay two comma and then you don't you'll just delete everything two comma and zero so you'll have similar thing over here as well so just do that and save this file can uh, click on control x y so control X then press Y and then enter so that is how you'll do that and once you're done with that now you need to test your audio and test make sure that your speakers and your microphones are working correctly so in order to test that we'll type in okay first I'll just turn my speakers on okay so I have my speaker right over here with my mic over here so this is my speaker I'll just test my speaker as well so I'll say speaker speaker dash test space dash T space W A V and click on enter front left front left front left so you will be able to Front, hear some left sound uh, with saying front left, front right and all that stuff 
and that will make sure that your speaker is working perfectly so if you didn't hear anything coming from your speakers so double check that they are plugged in correctly and they are turned up and if even if that doesn't work just check if you have gotten the device number and the card numbers correct so now it's time for us to check our microphones because we'll, we need to make sure that these things actually work because we uh, before we type in the code for raspberry pi because if we don't do this after going through all this hard work of coding everything we'll have a hard time figuring out what went wrong and where we are going wrong so we'll just make sure everything works perfectly and every step so now we'll just test our microphone as well so we'll give the command as a record space dash dash format equals capital S 16 underscore capital L E space dash dash duration equals 5 so what this will do is record a short a 5 seconds uh, audio clip and then we'll be able to play it back and then dash dash rate equals 16,000 and dash dash file dash type equals raw and then space the name of our file out dot raw and we'll click enter and then once we click enter it will record a message for uh, record our voice for five seconds okay uh, i spelled duration wrong so let me just go ahead and correct that and click enter again okay recording audio recording audio test so it is recording now let's try and play that sound back so in order to play that and if you have received an error running this command make sure that you have your microphone plugged in and this command will only succeed if it can successfully listen to your microphone so if this command works that means your microphone is working correctly now just to be sure that it's working fine we'll just go ahead and play out or the sound that we just recorded so for in order to play that we can use do it using the command right here so we'll say a play space dash dash format equals s16 just like we typed previously underscore le dash space dash dash rate equals 16000 space the name of the file so we named it out.raw when we were recording it so we'll name it out.raw as well and we'll play it okay recording audio recording audio so as you can as you might have been able to hear the recording played successfully and there was quite of quite a lot of background noise so if you think that your microphone voice i mean the voice from your speaker or the microphone recording voice is too low or too high you can change them in uh, i'll just show you the command in a minute but okay let me just show you first so it's ALS mixer so type in that command okay uh, maybe I spelled something wrong it oh sorry it's ALSA also mixer yeah so here you have your command and choose uh, click on F6 to change to your USB devices that you are using so in my case it's the and F6 is the one that you want to use so in my case it's USB audio codec I'll just click enter on that so because uh, as I told you my device has both speaker and mic connected to the same thing so I'll just do that so I found that around 70 is the optimum so you should keep your 
speaker and your output at around 70 but then it's up to you what you whatever you want to keep so uh, keep the mic as well at 70 or because these things are kind of optimal but if you want to change and play around with it you are free to do so and once you're done with it we'll just click on escape to exit so that's it with that so now we have confirmed that our microphone and speakers are working correctly so now we can move on into setting up our very own google assistant on raspberry pi so let's upgrade our system so we'll say sudo apt get upgrade update so we'll make sure everything is up to date and we also do sudo app get upgrade after this so let's just do this first this is done so now we'll also go ahead and say sudo app get upgrade so sudo app dash get space upgrade and we'll let it do that as well So click Y. So once this is done, what we want to do is we'll install the Python 3 development environment and we'll install pip as well and then we'll create virtual environments and then we'll also download the Google SDKs and everything. So we'll do that in just a while so this one is complete now so these some of these installations can take a while depending on uh, the size of them so and now i have done this and it's asking me to reboot just to complete the update so i'll just go ahead and reboot the raspberry pi so let's just reboot it okay so we have rebooted our pi and we have updated it and everything so now we'll download the python 3 for our raspberry pi so we'll say sudo apt get install python 3 dash dev space python 3 dash ven virtual environment so we'll download the python 3 virtual environment for our raspberry pi so after this we'll install so now this is done we will install python 3 in uh, we'll create the python 3 virtual environment so we'll say python 3 dash space dash m space venv for virtual environment and space the name we'll just name it env so let's just wait for that command to com complete um, it's taking some time okay let's run it again maybe there was an error before so, uh, so after we create the virtual environment we what we will do is we'll install pip and download the setup tools inside our virtual environment so we'll say env which is the name of our environment env slash forward slash bin forward slash python space dash m space pip install dash dash upgrade pip space setup tools space wheel and hit enter so this will install pip and the setup tools that are required and this will take some time and once this is done we will activate uh, our envir virtual environment and then we'll 
install the Google Assistant SDK on in that. So it's almost done and it successfully uninstalled the previous pip and now it will install the latest version of pip and setup tools. Okay, so it has installed the latest version pip 20 setup tools 49 and wheel 0.34. Okay, so we're good to go. So now we'll go into our virtual environment we'll using the source command we'll say source space env forward slash bin forward slash activate so over here as you can see now our pi at raspberry is behind that you can see it says env within brackets so this makes sure that you are inside your virtual environment now what we need to do is install some dependencies so to do that we'll type in this line of code so we'll say sudo space app get app dash get install okay install space port audio port audio 19 dash dev space lib ffi dash dev uh, space lib ssi dash dev and click enter and this will take a little bit of time and it's done okay so now uh, we'll install the google assistant sdk finally this is our final step for this process so we'll install python uh, dash m space pip install dash dash upgrade dash dash upgrade google uh, dash assistant dash sdk square brackets and within square brackets type in samples and hit enter now this command will take quite a lot quite some time so in the meanwhile you can go and have a cup of coffee so meanwhile this will process All right, so we have our Google Assistant SDK installed. So now what we'll do is we'll install the authorization tools as well for the SDK. But before we do that, there's one thing that you need to do, uh, which is you need to go home. You need to go to your home slash pi, and you need to paste the credentials file over here. So this credential file is the one that we copied previously from developers dot console uh, from the google developers console so you can copy you, you can copy paste it here so one way of copy pasting it here is opening go the same page in your browser and then copying the or downloading the file to this directory and once you have do done that you can just copy the path because we will need it later and now what we'll do is we'll install the authorization tools that are needed so we'll say python space dash dash m pip install dash dash upgrade space google dash a u t h auth dash o a u t h lib square brackets and within square brackets type in tool hit enter and it should be installed in a few seconds okay so it is done and now we need to type in this long command so just follow this command as I am 
saying so it's google because we want to authenticate the authenticate our credentials so we'll say google space uh, google dash o a u t h o auth lib dash tool uh, space dash dash scope space https colon forward slash forward slash www dot google apis dot com slash auth slash assistant dash sdk dash prototype and then space dash dash save space dash dash headless space dash dash client dash secrets and now after the secrets what you want to do is you will need to type so forward slash home forward slash pi and over here you will paste in the file paths that we just copied so we will just paste it here so I will paste it here so paste it here and make sure that you have the dot json there and click enter ok I think we have a typo somewhere in there so we will just check the command again so the error is because of the fact that so there are a couple of things so if let's just for in order to check which directory you are currently in just type in ls and or if you want to be sure just type in pwd so you are already in the home slash pi directory so which means that when you copy the path from the file when you right click on the file and copy path it will include the slash home slash pi by default so if, in case if you if it gives you an error and you are and you check that you are already in your home slash pi directory what you can do to avoid the error is uh, like in my case we can go to the same old command and remove the path which says home slash pi from the file name so after the part where it says dash dash client dash secrets uh, space file name and just remove the home slash pi from the file name and click enter and hopefully it works this time we don't get any error so as you see uh, it gives us a link to enter so we'll just go to the link and we'll complete the authorization and you can just copy this code and paste it in a web browser so let's open up our chromium so when we enter this core url into our web browser what will happen is uh, it will take us it will ask us to log into our google account and it will give us a code and that authentication code we will need to type in over here ok uh, why does it say so let's check again ok I forgot to copy the HTTPS my bad so copy the HTTPS as well and copy it's supposed to work by clicking on the link as well but I'm not sure why it's not working so I'll just copy paste and copy it and paste it in chromium so just paste it here enter now it will ask me to sign in to my google account and this is the same account that I had used to create uh, uh, the project so I will just log into that account mm. it is taking some time ok so I will allow it and it didn't ask me for a password because most probably because I already have my Google account signed in in my Raspberry Pi so that's why 
okay i'll just minimize this so that you can see what's actually going on so make sure that you trust i'll just click on allow Uh, yes and now it gave us this code authentication code so just copy this authentication code just copy it and we'll paste this code into our terminal where it says enter the authentication code we'll just copy this code and paste it there so we'll paste this code and click enter and yes we are done with the setting up our google assistant and sdk and authorization so that part we are done with the only thing that's left is to go ahead and try it out so after as so google has deprecated the hot word okay google since 2019 so now you won't unfortunately we won't be able to uh, access our uh, raspberry pi using the hot word but instead we'll be able to do that manually using our enter keys but i think it's pretty good even then so let's go ahead and try this out so type in google samples dash assistant dash push to talk space dash dash now here uh, we'll type project id project dash id and space now here you need to type in your project id and you also you'll also need your device model id now if you are unsure where you can find this the device model id is the one that we copied in the beginning of the video but in case if you don't have it or you forgot both of these i'll show you the way so just go on console.actions.google.com head to your projects click on your projects and once you're in there go to the develop section and in there you can see the model id right there that's you where you can find the model id from or uh, other the project id you can get it from here so go to project settings and this is your project id you can copy it from here so now i have i already have these both copied into a notepad so i'll just copy paste it from there so i'll just copy my model id first and then i'll paste it in here so i'll paste my model id first and then i have space dash dash device dash model dash id and space now here i'll need to type in the device model id which is this one right here i'll just copy and paste it right there so i'll paste it here and i'll hit enter so now most yeah now it should have been yeah okay so we've got it to work now whenever we press enter it sends a request so it'll use our microphone to uh, take the request and give us a feedback depending on uh, what we have asked so let's try this out so i've got my microphone and my speaker right over here so let's try this out google what's the temperature in uae the current temperature in abu dhabi is 97 degrees hey google what's 72 times 53 okay let me press enter again what's 73 times 52 73x52 is 3796 what's the weather going to be like tomorrow Tomorrow in Abu Dhabi, it will be mostly sunny with a high of 104 and a low of 92. So as you can see, it works absolutely amazingly. It's very nice for doing uh, or automating your home and this type of things are pretty simple to do but they are actually very effective and very helpful. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. 
and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends to, so that they can also may make use of their Raspberry Pi and their time during this holidays season and lastly don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you will never miss any of our interesting videos again. Till next time, see you, bye bye.